Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a further look at the 78XX and actually the 79XX series of voltage regulators we're going to have a quick look at um, something you can do with a, a fixed voltage regulator to turn it into a variable voltage regulator and then we'll actually um, see if we can create a, a practical practical example using these regulators. So let's start by reminding ourselves of the 78XX uh, general circuit arrangement. Okay quick recap on the general circuit then for the 78XX series of regulators and here I'm omitting any capacitors just for clarity. Uh, so supply rail um, on the left and regulated output on the right and the voltage of the regulated output depends on the particular component uh, that you've got in place there. In the case of the example in the previous uh, video it was the 7805. So let's stick with the 7805 and in the data sheet which I would encourage you to have a look at there's a number of uh, different configurations of the regulator and uh, one of them looks a bit like this. So we've still got the same 7805 in this case we're going to look at uh, in this video and supply of is still on the left hand side but now the uh, reference or the or the ground connection is no longer taken straight to ground but it's taken through a potential divider of two resistors and the lower of those two resistors uh, as you can see is arranged to be a variable resistor and what we're effectively doing there is we're fooling the regulator into believing that it's um, its ground connection is indeed attached to ground which of course it isn't and so the regulator will attempt to maintain a voltage which uh, it thinks is in reference to ground. So I've uh, picked just a couple um, through experimentation there is, there is a formula in the data sheets it's a little bit complicated but through experimentation I've picked these two values um, for resistors so a 680 at the top and a 2.5k trimmer pot. Now it's quite important you don't just attach that center point to the um, the wiper of a potentiometer and set up a potential divider like that because what you've got here is you've got a potential divider where the um, resistor attached to the output is always 680 ohms and you're only varying the lower half of the potential divider and that is significant it makes a difference. So on the breadboard nice simple layout not very much to it um, the large resistor on the top right is uh, just a, a load resistor. It's not shown in the, the circuit uh, on the right hand side there. But you can see the 680k resistor next to the black little jumper wire. Regulator is um, top center and the 2.5k pot um, off to the left. And then there's various connections just uh, attaching those uh, uh, bits of the supply to the positive and to the output rails. So let's now have a look at that uh, on the bench and see what we get. Okay here's the arrangement I've just described on the breadboard. Only additions being we've now got takeoffs here and here. This is the current measurement through the load resistor and that's the voltage measurement at the output. The voltage of the output is being shown here and the current uh, going through the load resistor has been shown up here in milliamps. So currently we've got about 8.1 volts coming out of this 5 volt regulator and we've got about just over 80 milliamps of current flowing through the load resistor. So I've got the wiper of the potentiometer currently relatively close to the um, centre of the voltage divider bridge so I'm now going to start turning down that potentiometer towards ground level and as you can see the voltage is climbing so I'm going to try and it's quite a sensitive adjustment we'll try and stop at 10 that's near enough for fiddling so I've got this 5 volt regulator now quite happily producing a regulated output of just over 10 volts at about 100 milliamps I'm not being very kind to my load resistor so I better not keep on this for too long um, and actually I can increase that if I want to should be able to get up to about 12 there we go, so I've now got a 12 volt regulator, again about 120 milliamps obviously as the voltage is rising the resistance is unchanged so the current is increasing. Um, it really isn't doing that resistor a lot of good, it's getting rather hot so I'm going to drop it back down to about 8 for now. Um, 
So I've got an input voltage of about 15 volts at the moment, and the reason it won't go any higher than 12, if I just quickly show you that, if I go up there, it doesn't matter how far I go, don't get very, yeah, get up to about 12.2, but that's it. The only way I'd get that higher is by increasing the, the input voltage. Uh, if you look at the spec for the 78 series, they've got a about a 2 volt uh, difference that's required between the input and the output, and that's what you that's what you'd effectively see in there. So there you are, a um, bit of theory in action. That's um, making a variable voltage regulator out of a fixed voltage regulator. Okay, well there you've seen um, the practical example of uh, repurposing the uh, fixed voltage regulator to do something else. Um, now I mentioned in the first video, and I'll put a link up the top there to the first video, um, about the 79XX series of regulators which are essentially the same except they're for the negative supply rail. And I'm also acutely aware that it's very easy on an electronics channel like this to produce lots of little circuit fragments which are very handy for, for learning the sort of the building blocks. And if you aren't careful, you never actually um, show them in, a, in some kind of practical use. So let's try and do that now uh, in the sense that let's try and produce some kind of uh, working power supply that we can actually show how these things are actually used in practice. So let's start by looking at the circuit diagram. The plan then is to produce a 50-5 power supply using a 78XX and a 79XX uh, regulator chips. So the arrangement we're going to uh, produce is this. We've got AC supply coming on the left, uh, fairly standard bridge rectifier, which produces positive going rail on the right hand side and a negative going rail on the left hand side and those are alternatively attached to the inputs of the 78 and the 7905. There's two smoothing capacitors, 1000 microfarad before that, and note the polarities um, to make sure that we maintain the, the plus and the minus with relation to the, the zero rail. And also I'm taking the zero rail off the bottom of the bridge rectifier and if this were um, coming off a, a main supply that would probably be the um, uh, grounded side of, of the transformer as well. So centre rail just goes straight through then and we've got the 7805 at the top, 7905 at the bottom. Uh, we've got the two 100 nanofarad capacitors which are to do with um, not to do with smoothing, more to do with noise reduction and then a couple of 100 microfarad smoothing capacitors and it's a relatively straightforward circuit. Just something to bear in mind if you're thinking of having a go at this though is that the 78805 um, has the ground pin in the centre and also the tab is ground. So input on the left, the output on the right. But the 7905 is different. So ground is on the left, input is in the centre and input is also the tab. Whereas the output is on the right. So just bear that in mind. If you couldn't, for instance, bolt those to the same heat sink, well you could but it <laughs> would result in problems. So just bear that in mind. Right, OK, let's look at that on the breadboard. And again, laid out from left to right, got the A sub C supply entering at the top there, and I've repurposed the, the plus and the minus at the top rails as the AC supply. And the minus side is the bit that's going to be connected to the, the centre ground as well. So I've got uh, four diodes as a bridge rectifier. At the bottom of those four diodes, we've got the minus and the plus outputs which feed the bottom two rails which I've repurposed as as the um, bridge rectifier output DC rails and you can see the two thousand microfarad electrolytics um, connected to those two rails but then both connected to the to the minus on the uh, bottom of the bridge rectifier. 7805 and 7905 are centre stage and there's various uh, wires keeping them supplied as is their requirements. Green wire is the positive supply into the 7805 just underneath it and the yellow wire underneath the 7905 is the, the negative rail supply into that. And then we've got uh, at the bottom right the two small 100 nanofarad um, capacitors and then the 200 microfarads smoothing capacitors at the top and what we end up with is plus minus and ground outputs so that should be plus 5 minus 5 and ground 
and that's the general arrangement uh, on the breadboard. So let's have a look at that in practice. Here's the circuit I've just described then, uh, laid out on the breadboard and it uh, follows the general arrangement of the circuit diagram running from left to right. So we've got the AC supply coming in this barrel connector here from a little transformer and I've just uh, disconnected the um, plus and minus supply rails on that top breadboard there because I want to repurpose them for something else. So the AC supply um, comes in here on those two supply rails there uh, which is convenient because it allows me to uh, pick up that one side of that as the um, if you like the neutral line um, in between the plus and the minus rails. So we've got the four diodes doing the bridge rectifier and the output from those two is there so I've got this meter set to volts so we'll just have a quick look I'm trying to get my hands out the picture for you. So we've got about about 20 and a half volts unregulated DC coming off the bridge rectifier and um, these are 16 volt capacitors a thousand microfarad and so you might be tempted to say well you've got 20 volts across those built um, shouldn't be doing that that's a bit naughty and you're quite right um, I shouldn't be doing that but the good news is I'm not because if you actually check the voltage across those capacitors if it'll give me a, a reading it's actually about 13 and a half volts on that one which is the one that goes to the um, positive supply rail and I'll just swap the leads around so we get the correct polarity and we should have a similar voltage yep about 13.1 volts across the other and that's because these capacitors aren't across the supply they're actually across one side of the supply and that that neutral line that we've picked up off one uh, one corner of the bridge rectifier so that's the the input smoothing we've got the 78805 here and the 7905 there uh, with lots of uh, little interconnecting wires and then we've got the two output smoothing electrolytics here not any concerns about those those happen to be um, 25 volt and I've also got a, those 100 nanofarad um, capacitors going across the output there so let's have a look at what we've got now in a de desperate attempt to maintain some convention here we've got the positive going rail the negative going rail and this blue one here should be that neutral line so what we'll do is we'll put the uh, negative probe onto the neutral line there and we should have plus 5 volts here I think plus 4.98 is good enough yeah and we should have here minus well, we've got minus 0.505 there and then if we put the probes across both of them we should have about 10-ish volts something like that 10.02 so you can see there that's the 7805 producing the positive going 5 volts the 7905 uh, producing the negative going 5 volts and we've picked up that centre rail um, from one corner of the bridge rectifier and produced um, a practical 505 power supply Okay, well hopefully you've seen a practical use there for the 78XX and the 79XX series of voltage regulators. And I'd encourage you to have a go um, on the breadboard and try a few things out and learn some practical electronics. I, I find it incredibly useful and it brings some of the sometimes dull parts of electronics theory to life and it's quite nice to, to get things working. If you've liked the video, please click the thumbs up. If not, you can click the thumbs down or perhaps put a comment. Uh, be great to um, hear what you think. Those of you who've been purchasing things through some of my affiliate links below, I uh, really appreciate that. That's a great way to support the channel. In fact, it's currently the only way to support the channel. Um, and anything I have made there, I will put straight back into the channel and hopefully um, improve the, the content for you. So until next time, um, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you on the next video.